All right. I am playing this game again. Um, I don't know what to do now. Rage quit. This ain't rage quitting. I'm playing a different game. There you are. Luca. Rolo wanted me to tell you something. Roxy what is it? Rolled her eyes, shaking her head. Huh. A space adventure through you you needed though you needed to buy it. If you be brave, go somewhere quiet. Oh Roxy, I don't. It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Look, I don't know. Who, I know you had a fight. The only thing about thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. Oh, sneezing. Oh, man. Ooh. So what's everyone doing this weekend? It's supposed to be really nice how people can go inside a lot. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need one f favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squish it. Squash it. Squash it. Squish it. Squash it. A space adventure through that you needed to buy if you're brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, it sounds like his... The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. I don't know who P P Panero Harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. The town's still falling apart. The weather's still cloudy. And this season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pondering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But the lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fitz, I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while slipping some delicious lemonade, is all. Okay. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Cure's speech and personal per Pernanel Harvest Festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. Okay. Unique New York, unique New York. Huh? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just warming up for my big ceremony speech. Gotta limber up the old gab box. <laughs> you nervous? Uh, heavens no. Well, break a leg. Give me... I don't know what that said. How does the beetle hunt... How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much, so much as in whatever that says. And it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like something, like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. I'm sure they're out somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spook them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Hmm. Did you hear? Mr. Kerr give, gives his big speech. They're going to have a first annual 
biggest catch competition. As long as a boot qualifies as a catch, I am a shoe in. Good luck. <laughs> Nice and s okay. Um, what else is in here? I guess he's not here, huh? Hmm. I thought that would be his quiet place. Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. Hey, Jeff, everything all right? Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, everything's fine. I mean, I'll uh, be fine. She just ain't these days, you know? What? Just ain't right these days. I really do, actually. You do, don't ya? For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. Ha ha ha, every single time. Yup. Wait for it. <laughs> Unexplained so sound once again. Noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. Haha. -ha. That's funny. Ain't moving. <laughs> That's funny. This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the fall harvest. I have my doubts about parental harvest, but I must admit they do put a nice party. Whoops. Hey, Aluka, how's Griffin doing? What? Sorry, oh, nothing. Flesh. Just pretend I didn't see anything. Hmm. Hmm. He met his own friend's eyes and was greeted with nothing but ice cold anger. Heavens! This is no f time for fractured friendships. Piper, you're taking a break from studying? I want to see all the festival fuss is all about, but I can't help but notice. You still brought your backpack full of books. Local backpacks can carry a lot more than bo just books. True, true. So what you got in there? Books? <laughs> I was able to return the parental harvest safety, s safety suit we borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now, will you tell me what you're needed for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. This isn't going to harm Mr. Kerr, is it? All that you need to know is that it's going for the... It, it's, it's for the good of the family. Hmm. A most welcome of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. What's this way? Luca, did you know that Beacon Pines is actually unincorporated? A lot of people didn't know that. Yeah, well, I didn't know it yet. I already read this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. 
And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision, a vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then hmm. tragedy struck. A scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Riverfront Fund. Interesting. That was unhelpful. <laughs> hey, Luca. So you're done at the library, huh? Griffin oh, nothing. Suspiciously. Nothing at all. Uh. Hey, you got a here for that. Melon kicker. Find a way to kick the melon. <laughs> uh, how about the Vikings? Uh, there they won. They sure won. Did win. Surprised they even won. How about those, those the, the wild? They've been, they've been shit. Lower somewhere quiet. Hmm. The wild. Hey, Luca. It's been I've been expecting you. Bravo on de deciphering the first riddle. The first. The riddle me riddle me this. Slow the riddle. Oh, you didn't think that was odd, did you? Rollo does go out all out, doesn't he? And cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Uh, is that a hockey team? I guess not. Um, <clears throat> one plant for for a pole. You may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right. When you find find it, bring it. Find it. Bring it where here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hint, the offer still stands. Okay. There were rarely any actual new additions. Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Luca grabbed Can't fool me, pal. Success from the shelf. Once you grab a book, you can either bring it to me or just grab it on a different one. Let's see what you what we have here. Five pillars of success. Nope, I'm afraid that's not the correct book. It's okay, here's a hint. The words I emphasize are important. One planet purple, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. F fifth issue. Uh, what? The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. I think that was it. Oh, you found it! From the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he 
He slid the book under the purple light. Two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rollo Cypher Fen Pen. He used to write secret messages every, everywhere with, with that thing. And only I had the special flashlight and needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this purple light bulb. Parted it with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rollo. Now, let's see here. Flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grift. He continued flipping. Only found in Grub Cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in Grub Cart. Griffin, 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 Griffin grab cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, the brilliant. I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Kato. Off I go. Is this the stand that he's talking about? No. That's not the stand, is it? Old Pickles Pop. pop. Oh, dang it. I don't think that's it. That I'm not gonna last trans diner. The hell. Griffin snack stand. Where the hell is that at? Yawn. I've got a question for you. What do you think of this whole festival is for? The, fi I, the way I figure it, Perno Harvest is trying to win over the town. Like a bribe, but with balloons. Tentacle. I like where your head's at. That's what I assumed the first two. Until I eavesdropped on a couple of gossipy clip cords. What if I told you that this whole thing is really a special shining of super secret guest of honor? A special guest? Who? I haven't dug that deep yet. Or however it is. It is HP thinks they're a big deal. Is that not the... Hmm. What's in here, huh? Probably of Okay. What's over here? Nothing over there. to go. I 
I gotta go to Griffin's, whatever that is. Is that right, right, right here? No? What the hell? I don't know where to go. Did I already screw up already or what? Griffin snack stand. Where the hell is that at? Is that right there? No, it's not. Oh my god. I don't know. Oh. Okay. Hey, Griffin. Before Did Rolo come here? His sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Oh, what's that? Brought, bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Yuck, it's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here for a while. Roll that wanted me to be sure to give you that one step. <laughs> well that's just tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. Oh come on. I I pick up when you need some pep. Near the fountain of up the step. Ugh, this is getting a bit, a bit, be a whole thing. That's funny. I best, I better go up the. Whoops. There you are, Luca. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It, it's way below my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big st stiff. Let's let the kids have some fun. Fine. But Rolo owes me one. His hands around sarcastically as he began. What takes flight but has no wings? Your final task a friendship brings. See what? That wasn't so hard. Huh. Uh, I feel che cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. Like it takes flight and no flight. Okay. Good luck, Luca. Put the balloon right there. Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then, I know it doesn't make 
make up for what I said. But here, well, you've earned this. <laughs> Flight. Thanks. You didn't have to go all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you're supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Let me... Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With what happened with... What's happened. With everything that's happened, with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? And you said you were hanging out with someone else. I kind of freaked out. Rolo? Still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friends to help you, it meant that it wasn't good. I wasn't good enough. And that it was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apologize. Over. Luca you can talk now. At Rolo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rolo, I didn't deserve you. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. But that's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We could still snoop around and try to find out info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into the Pernal Harvest headquarters where everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those cooplers write down? What if we get caught? I think I've got enough excitement for one week. That's just what the rest of the day is about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait w one more day. You know, I haven't wanted to get some work done at the MCDC at Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. Alright. I got the balloons. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. I ran to your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. An unopened letter. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. Luke, A letter. Some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried. Everything I've done. I did. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. I... I love you too, Gran. I paper into his pocket and had it up the ladder. What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whatever you want. It's 49 degrees out, I might get frostbite. <laughs> oh my god. That's, that's funny. <laughs> you know, you really don't didn't have to go all the trouble to just apologize. But I, I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks. Can you make me some soup? Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make some soup right away f for you. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure it still had a good time without me. Rollo. The festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. Man, that's, this is fine. Oh, this is, there's always next year. This was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Oh man, we missed the fireworks. It was something the 
voice couldn't possibly comprehend something as old and cruel as time itself. What the? The big chill. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town no. made low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together. For the rest of time. The end. No. Huh. It can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Um. Let's see. Does that break? Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Be right back. Alright, I'm back. Sure, you can meet Rollo. You're not going home? No, I promise Rollo I tell him about him tell I tell him about mid sentence. Promise you tell him what? Spit it out, Bub. You're thick as fees now. What? If, if, if there's a juicy secret, you've got to tell me. Okay. You can come to our the treehouse and tell it. I'll tell you what happened. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, luminous mansion, rich, elusive owners, and it's even it smells shady. Iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you descendant nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. 
That's Harris Val Valentine. Who is that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I worry about is is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. Here, there comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now, this is what I was talking about. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? What do you ex understand that when this is on un unbuilt fails? I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look at that grub curse face. And yes, yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're still comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If that's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting I was expecting shady, but that's just that's just flat out vil super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you, why are you doing the all of this? Figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. A chill Family. Down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until I the festival. I don't need lessons in Rose's suspicion. Kurt nod and disappeared into the night. Oh jeez, what's been happening now? Chapter five. What big ears you have. Luca sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Chapter 5, huh? What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that little lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Well, okay, well, I'm sure there's a perfectly ex reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure out things out, uh, out there. Lead the way. Okay, I'm scared now. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Hmm. Uh, what's in here? No, nothing in there. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. Finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotted out I's and crossing out the T's. Well, maybe try minding your own P's and, and, and Q's. Arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you're just sign here, I'm not I'm knowing, acknowledging that everything was accurate. It'll be all of your hair in the flash. Oh, for the love of. <laughs> and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my in turn off soul as well at each other for a moment almost pondering the possibility then broken the laughter as they walked away 
Ha ha ha. Hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you know don't ask to hear your thoughts, give them a good a hard boop right in the kisser. Oh, Grant tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Grant is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you, be, you better run all... all Alone home. Along home now. Too dark out to be wandering out on your own. Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Lee. Have you noticed how all that perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam? Why? I don't know. I just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, this the customer is always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. <sighs> I can't wait. <laughs> I'm gonna get to dilly dally and get to the The answer you seek will be real to you in due time. The question is the f is the figure intoned. Are you prepared to live with your with the truth? Hmm. Interesting. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all come to quite, to quite nicely. C couldn't have done it without you. Shrug. I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense. This reminds me, I wasn't able to thank you, your sister, for your, uh, her competitions. Yes, yet she's been indisposed of late. She doesn't like me, does she? Oh no, that's not at all. At all, she's been busy. Of course. Regardless, I have been, I would be forever grateful if I could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're a darn tootin' he was. I mean, the entire Va Valentine family. Present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, are you doing this? Why are you doing all this? Gosh, I never felt one needed to a co compelling reason to throw a party. Not just a festival. All of this. There's gotta be a hundred dot. There's gotta be a hundred down on their luck pounds there. Why is the print of Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I most what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Seeds. Yep, a little bundle of potential. You treat a seed right, nature, earth, and feed it. And it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mr. Valentine. Hmm. Well, what? Oh, this is nice. 
Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo, he's Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I haven't never thought about it. <laughs> Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been in tough for this family since the fall have uh, has harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this fall harvest thingy is. It's kind of a long story. Hit me up with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They're, they were kind of a big deal. Oh, big deal f fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. F farmers loved it. So Valentine grew and grew. Beacon pines pretty mu much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a bit big but Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or s air or soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The fall harvest. Yeah. Valentine fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year, the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crap shoot from what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rollo f Farm got short end of the stick? Yep. For some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. Yeah. Yep. First thing they do was give the town a deep scrub. They put. They even put up in, ho in hotels one town for a week while they de decaminated the groundwater. Hmm. We better get going. It's about time. I was about to go give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name is Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my repetition precedes me. <laughs> Welcome to Mission Control. You find we spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Look, let me look, lock this baby down and for a little test and flirt a little something. Maybe, oh my god. Can't be too safe these days. He goes all odd, doesn't he? Always. Uh. What am I supposed to do here?
Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in a town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk? Food for junk. Nice. <laughs> So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative. I'll give you that. Luca, are you sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vote for her. Thanks, I guess. Luca, okay, Luca, we promise I'll fill me in all at the Valentine warehouse. Luca um, long breath. like I said, there was something, someone there. What are, were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squ squatters. I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled in, pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You kept saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. And it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let me go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Harris Valentine meeting with Gran. Wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. And they were there for idle chit chat. It was a proper Clance something meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation full swing at the Valentine warehouse, and you were abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. Then you saw your gran in that same suit talking to Harris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Look. <laughs> That's funny. Man, I'm thirsty. Time for some, some pop. All right, night time. Some Diet Coke. Um. Rollo and Longa. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies ha have in fact uh, something in the town. That's not even pop. Uh, Coke Zero is not even pop. And their leader is your grand, and she tried to murder you. First of all, if and for the last time, there is no aliens. <laughs> Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged. But she definitely hiding something. Maybe. The gran is weird and she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. Drink the king of pops Coke Zero like I am. <laughs> what could she possibly leave and have to hive? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? The grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after after his mom went missing. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. I've been, I've been, years since I've seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way, but are we sure your grand is on the up up? Luca what? Out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like, it sounds like strange stuff has happened, been happening since she showed up. 
We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your grand is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks only bury stuff we're digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I call you... I call you to tomorrow when the coast is clear. And when you start getting to the bottom of this... I'm always game for good, for a good snoop. You can count me in. Jeez. Chapter six. Wow. Secret lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Should I play some uh, destroy this destroyopolis? He slipped my time into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What time is it? Let's see what else is in here. Oh yeah, I'm getting a freaking phone. Battlefield? What? Oh, cheese. Rollo, what on earth is that? Hmm. That ridiculous thing you're on your head. Oh, this. It helps me think. <laughs> You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. You'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whatever she's been up to this week has been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rolo strutted across the room. If your grand... If I were your grand, what... Where would I have my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He coughed. Ha ha! A veil of dust <laughs> hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't that we're that what we're looking for, or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again. Any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. <laughs> Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat. I may already be too late that night. Just think of the mound, mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop, stop you right there. You, Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anything where Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands the reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. <laughs> and I have no idea what, what the key, where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berries bushes. Who ha has ever thought? I'm going to take important thing, this important thing, and huck it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she's always worried I, I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter any anyway. I can't reach the, that latch. Crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. All right, Lo Rollo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. 
And now I shall proceed with... Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. Hey, this isn't any idea of detective work. Every squ squad needs a good lockpick. And you and every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was unclimatic. Yeah, I don't really know what we were, we were expecting. Like, oh hey! Let me just yank at this random teacup and... One of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Seems like your grandma's been doing something re remodeling. Dude! Any type of... Any, any two, two types of people have uh, secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do you do we think she is? We're about to find out. So okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracy vibe. Oh wow! Yeah, that cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping into conclusions. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? And caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I here, let me help. Spiked the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's big it's a, it's the best to skip through Get straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. <laughs> wow, I had no idea that you were in the presence of. We were in the presence of the Freeman Scholar and Dense Documents and Cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. Ah, here we are. Follow my ex examination of. Terrace will be. Patient shows further signs of paleness and well, whatever that says. Body, tem tem <laughs> body temperature continues to drop. And how it describes soreness of muscle and joints. This is similar to symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. The page. There's more scribbling in the, in the mar margarines. Could it be contagious? Mr. Willoughby claims the tap water at his house has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to the to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, pr progresses so fast. With his wife passing Terrence. Condition follows close behind. 
accept by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters on my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What do you what did he mean? Enough is enough. How did he take men as of own as of own hands? This is bullshit. <laughs> what do we have here? Barrel marked caution explosive. And jam jars. That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of what kind of center jam is grand, grand making? She can she wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs, right? Only one way to find out. Spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberry. A hint of brown sugar, and. Ink? Lolo what? His hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Lolo ha! Tiny note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. Is <laughs> it's Andres, uh, Mrs. Bertilli, a grand jam, a grand jam gram. It says, last time I used the disguise Harris provided to scout the location. The time and window shouldn't be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh, man. Are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't, can't be good. It's more of a bombshell than a bomb. Am I right? You're new here, so let me... I'll let it slide. <laughs> but I... I'm the bad joke guy around here. That's funny. Alright. Uh, that break it? A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she has her. She sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is that your grand. Is your grand a silo killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's been tracking the movements of everyone in town. Out of kindness of her heart, but she she put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mrs. Nunkreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all about inside a big circle. My moms are both my moms are both on there, both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Harris has a question mark. There's been has been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Curious has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know that any of that means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this is, looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rollo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. 
It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it, the path with his finger. it leads right he to down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. That's a weird place to hide treasure. Um, Rollo, that isn't look. That doesn't look like a treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure. It's a real bummer. Rollo, what's what's that thing you've been excited about for the last pa the past month? The festival. Gulp. Did you say? <laughs> did you say gulp? <laughs> this feels like a, a gulp kind of situation. Everyone has will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Uh oh. Huh? What was that? What was that? What was what? No, I heard. Heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. And which means someone's upstairs. Quiet. It hits the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up. The tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? reached the entrance above them and the voice now echoed down the stairs the anyone down there to the corners without a peep as he began to descend the stairs the man's voice punctuated every new step Thump. yahoo I'm not here to hunt hurt anyone I'm just here to help just at the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh? Guess it's nothing. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. It was Rollo, don't. Late. Rollo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop. <laughs> With all his weight, Rollo tackled the man to the ground. Rollo? Myster mysterious creepy man? From the Anyone corner, there? They saw something move. Well, I didn't know if... I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only way to find out. Holy crap, Rollo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just Luke kill that person? To the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. You just you were shoot clobber him good, Rollo. He knocked he As knocked out cold. Back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mister Trover. Chapter seven. Oh man. I think I think it's time for some battlefield, huh? <laughs> the interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They run. The class is good. Uh. They'd 
chill ho good cop chill cop interrogation I'll handle this just gotta play it cool Luca walked calmly to the light switch all right off and I think I'm gonna times. end it right here and play some battlefield huh I will be right back be right back <laughs>